A very good evening and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bulfet. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable of congratulations from the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of Bahrain Olympic Committee, Zahana Sheikh Nasser bin Hamid Al Khalifa, on the occasion of the victory of the Royal Endurance Team in His Majesty the King's Cup for Endurance Race in its 14th edition. His Highness praised the support of His Majesty the King that drives the team to achieve further progress. His Highness affirmed that that more efforts will be exerted as promised in the principles that were announced during the Charter of Gold to enhance the status of the Kingdom at the international level. In reply, His Majesty the King sent a similar cable to His Highness Sheikh Nasser and expressed thanks and appreciation for His Highness's efforts. His Majesty praised this national achievement which reflects the high level of the riders and also praised the efforts of the Royal Equestrian Federation's and Endurance Race for its contributions in making this achievement. His Majesty extended his appreciation to His Highness for assuming this national responsibility and pointed out that the Kingdom is witnessing remarkable progress in the youth and sports sectors in which le that led to the enhancement of the Kingdom's status in sports events. His Majesty wished His Highness and the Kingdom success and further accomplishments. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today the senior royal family members at the Dabiya Palace where they discussed a number of local affairs topics. His Royal Highness affirmed that the people of Bahrain have managed to build a developed country, highlighting their effective role in the progress and prosperity the country witnesses in various fields. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister stated that the outcomes of development cannot be achieved without an atmosphere of security and stability which calls for for strengthening national unity. His Royal Highness asserted that the goal of every effort exerted by the country's institutions is serving citizens and that the government is keen on fulfilling the needs of citizens through the implementation of projects. He expressed pride in the efforts exerted by the people of Bahrain in work and production sites and in their dedication and sincerity to establish the aspects of development. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today in the presence of the Representatives Council member Basim Al Malki, the President of the Sunni Endowment Council Dr. Rashid bin Mohammed Al Hajri and the Under Secretary of Islamic Affairs at the Ministry of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments Sheikh Dr. Farid bin Yaqub Al Miftah. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister issued a decree to inventory wooden mosques in the Kingdom to list them in the places of worship development projects. He also directed to facilitate and speed up the procedures of issuing mosque building permits. His Royal Highness affirmed the government's interest in places of worship and its keenness on maintaining their status and religious role by improving their condition. His Royal Highness Prime Minister asserted that maintaining places of worship is at the top of the government's interest, hailing the role of imams and preachers in raising awareness on religious matters and sharia and increasing cohesion in society. His Royal Highness stated that the kingdom takes pride in its interest in maintaining mosques and places of worship and in its keenness on providing all the requirements of developing their religious and community role. For their part, the President of the Sunni Endowments Council and Under Secretary of Islamic Affairs at the Ministry of Justice expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness Prime Minister for his interest in mosques, places of worship, preachers and imams and for his interest in meeting them, listening to them and addressing their concerns. For his part, Representative Basim Al Malki hailed the swift response of His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, on the issue of wooden mosques, asserting that His Royal Highness is always keen on all that concerns citizens. Mm -hmm. 
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received a delegation of the Thai investors in the medical field at the Qadabiya Palace today. During the meeting, His Royal Highness affirmed that the two countries' cooperation in this field represents one of the highlights of the deep-rooted friendly bilateral relations, which he said are witnessing developments and progress on all fronts. His Royal Highness praised Bahraini-Thai relations and said that Bahrain is keen on further cooperation through the exchange of expertise, mutual visits signing of memorandums and treaties. His Royal Highness stressed on the importance of taking advantage of the medical capabilities in both countries, which represent a solid ground upon which common investments can be developed in the service of the peoples of the two countries as well as their economies. For their part, the Thai delegation expressed thanks to His Royal Highness the Premier for his keenness to bolster Bahraini-Thai relations on all aspects and praised the progress and development that Bahrain's medical sector is experiencing through its world-class facilities. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa was briefed today on the work progress of a number of service projects through the presentation made by the Minister of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning, Engineer Rassam bin Abdullah Khalaf, with a number of senior officials at Qadabiya Palace. His Royal Highness directed to speed up the implementation of four health and developmental projects that aim to serve citizens and meet their needs. His Royal Highness directed that the Mohammed bin Khalifa Cardiac Center in Awali to include all services for visitors, residents in the surrounding area, those who receive treatment at the hospital, their families, as well as hospital staff. The Prime Minister ordered the quick completion of technical details and the launch of the Khalifa City Health Project in a public tender and instructed the start of the operational steps in Muharraq, which consists of a long-term hospital, an elderly care centre, a hospital for multiple solicitors, and a maternity hospital. His Royal Highness was briefed on the progress of the Asada project and directed to begin the second phase of the project. His Royal Highness also reviewed the implementation of the Muharraq Central Market project. His Royal Highness Prime Minister stressed the importance of speeding up the implementation of service projects across the kingdom in accordance with plans and strategies developed by the government that meet the requirements of the present and the future. His Royal Highness affirmed that the aim of the kingdom's various development projects is to achieve the aspirations of the citizens. His Royal Highness affirmed the government's keenness to follow up on housing, health, education, infrastructure, roads projects and many others and implement them according to the highest quality. The Prime Minister reiterated his directives to ministers and officials to visit work sites and meet with citizens and listen to their concerns regarding projects. His Royal Highness added that serving citizens is the government's priority. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister hailed the efforts of the Ministry of Works, Municipal Affairs and Urban planning and all its employees in implementing and following up with various developmental projects and its commitment to meeting quality and efficiency standards in the implementation of these projects. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Spring Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today received the Ambassador of India to Bahrain, Alu Kumar Sinha, at Rufa Palace. During the meeting, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and the Ambassador reviewed bilateral ties and exchanged views on issues of common interest. Ambassador Sinha expressed gratitude and appreciation for the opportunity to meet His Royal Highness the Crown Prince.
The Arab Interparliamentary Union commenced its 29th conference in the Jordanian capital Amman today under the slogan, Jerusalem is the eternal capital of Palestine. The conference is patronized by His Majesty King Abdullah bin Al Hussein II of Jordan and it's attended by Bahrain Speaker of the Council of Representatives Fozia bin Abdullah Zainal along with an accompanying Bahraini delegation. Zainal is set to give a speech in front of speakers of Parliament of Arab countries today through which she will affirm the importance of cooperation between Arab parliaments in international forums, as well as the importance of pushing towards common Arab action to address Arab issues and challenges. Chairman of the Shura Council's Committee for Women and Children's Affairs, Dr. Fatma Abdel Jabbar Al Kohaji, has been elected as Chairman of the Committee for Women and Children's Affairs at the Arab Interparliamentary Union in the organization's 29th conference in Amman, Jordan. Dr. Kohaji affirmed that the conditions of women in any society indicate its level of progress and its ability to cope with the challenges of the time, which include the diffusion of democratic values as well as respect for for the principles of citizenship and human rights. Dr. Al Kohji added that Bahraini women have the capabilities as well as the necessary supporting legislation to face various challenges and praise the achievements that have been made in this field thanks to the efforts of Bahrain's leadership and its reform projects. At the end of the 29th conference of the Arab Interparliamentary Union today, the Shura Council Secretary General Osama Ahmed Al Asfour received, on behalf of the former Secretary General of the Shura Council, Abdul Jalil Ibrahim Al Tarif, the Parliamentary Excellence Award in recognition of his contribution to the effective parliamentary development and its impact in supporting the members of the Council as well as the developing professional performance. On this occasion, Osama Ahmed Al Asfour expressed appreciation to the Arab Interparliamentary Union and extended his congratulations to the chairman of the Shura Council, Ali bin Salah Saleh, the former Secretary General of the Shura Council, Abdul Jalil Ibrahim al Tarif, for winning this prestigious Arab Award. He noted that the Shura Council is a result of the pioneering reform project of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa. He added that the achievement is for the kingdom and its people, wishing all success in serving the country. The Shura Council held its session today presided over by its chairman Ali bin Salah al Salah. The session approved the recommendations of the Council's Youth Committee regarding the proposal on sports professionalism. The Council decided to send back the report of the Committee of Public Utilities and Environment on the draft law on the rental of real estate to the Committee for further study. The meeting approved the recommendation of the Financial and Economic Affairs Committee on amending Article 4 of the Financial and Administrative Control Law. The Minister of Interior General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa headed today Bahrain's delegation at the meetings of the 36th session of the Arab Inter Ministers Interior Ministers Council in Tunisia, which he held, which is held under the patronage of the Tunisian President Beji Qaidis Sibsi. This session was chaired by Saudi Interior Minister and Honorary President of the Council, His Royal Highness Prince Abdulaziz bin Saud bin Naif Al Saud. In a statement, the Council decided to award the order of Prince Taif for Arab security of the excellent class in its second session to the Emir of Kuwait, Zana Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, in appreciation of his role in the field of strengthening Arab security, serving Arab issues, and his contributions in establishing unity and solidarity among Arab states. The Council also approved a ninth phase plan for the Arab strategy to combat the illicit use of narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances, and eight phase plan for the Arab strategy for countering terrorism and a fifth phase plan for the Arab civil protection strategy. أصحاب السمو والمعالي إن المسؤولية الأمنية العربية تستوجب علينا تقديم الملف الأمني على سوى والعمل فورا على تصنيف الأخطار الأمنية المشتركة ووضع الحلول لمعالجتها وخصوصا تلك المتعلقة بالتدخلات الخارجية بأمننا الداخلي ومن أهم تلك التدخلات والتهديدات كما تعلمون هو الخطر الإيراني المتنامي حيث بلغ الاستهتار بسيارة الدول العربية وهويتها الوطنية من قبل القادة الإيرانيين في مختلف المناسبات للإعلان عن حدود 
إيران الفارسية الكبرى وطبعا فإن ذلك يشكل انتهاكا لسيارة دول الجوار بما فيها العربية والإسلامية الشقيقة لذا أصبحت الحاجة ملح ولا تحتمل التأجيل فيما تتعرض له منطقتنا من تهديدات فإن إيران ما زالت مستمرة في تعكير صف واستقرار الدول العربية بتدخلات في شؤوننا الداخلية وهي المصدر الرئيسي الذي يدعم المنظمات والجماعات الإرهابية في المنطقة وهذا الأمر يتطلب مواجهة هذه التهديدات باتخاذ موقف عربي وإجراءات واضحة لوقف هذه التدخلات معتمدين بعد الله على تصميمنا وتكاتفنا الوطني للحفاظ على هويتنا العربية فوحدة الموقف واجتماع الكلمة وتضافر الجهود هي الكفيلة بوضع حد لمثل هذه التجاوزات ووقف هذه الأطماع التوسعية أصحاب السمو والمعالي إضافة إلى ما تقدم فأن التحديات الأمنية التي نواجهها اليوم هي كثيرة ومنها سوء استخدام تقنية الاتصالات الحديثة والتي فرضت نفسها على الساحة الأمنية مما شكل ذلك عبئاً أمنياً على جميع الدول وبدون استثناء وقد تم استغلال هذه التقنية من قبل الجماعات الإرهابية بشكل مؤثر مكنها من تنفيذ العمليات الإرهابية في مناطق ومدن متقدمة أمنياً وحضارياً وهذا الأمر يتطلب منا التنسيق مع دول العالم للحد من سوء استخدام هذه التغنيات من قبل الجماعات والمنظمات الإرهابية والعمل على توحيد الإجراءات بين الأجهزة المعنية بالاتصالات وتقنية المعلومات لوضع التشريعات المناسبة التي تواكب التطور المتنامي والسريع في مجال الاتصالات أما الأمر الآخر الذي أود أن أشير إليه هو ظاهرة المخدرات التي أصبحت تشهد انتشارا كبيرا في مجتمعاتنا بالرغم من الجهود المبذولة من أجزتنا في مكافحة المخدرات وتصميمها على الحد من انتشارها وهذا ما يدفعنا إلى تطوير أجهزتنا الأمنية المعنية بمكافحة المخدرات ضمن منظومة أمنية متجانسة تعمل على سرعة تبادل المعلومات فيما بينها من أجل حد على انتشار تلك الآفة في مجتمعاتنا مع التأكيد على أهمية نشر ثقافة القناعة الذاتية ووضع البرامج التوعوية الهادفة إلى تحصين مجتمعاتنا من المخدرات وأثارها السلبية للوصول إلى قناعة الامتناع عنها وبهذا الخصوص يسعدني دعوة المعنيين في أجهزة مكافحة المخدرات التابعة لوزاراتكم الموقرة للإطلاع على التجربة الوطنية لمملكة البحرين والمتمثلة في تطبيق برنامج معا لمكافحة العنف والإدمان الذي تشرف على تنفيذه وزارة الداخلية وهو يهدف إلى تثقيف طلبة المدارس في كافة المراحل من أجل تحصينهم من مخاطر الإدمان بأسلوب بقائي يسهم وبشكل فاعل في توعيتهم بمخاطر المخدرات وما تسببه من آثار نفسية وجسدية سيئة وفي الختام أتمنى لاجتماعنا التوفيق والسداد لإنجاح مسيرتنا الأمنية العربية المشتركة وتهيئة الأسباب للنهوض بمجتمعاتنا وتوفير متطلبات الأمن والتقدم لوطننا العربي والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته
On the sidelines of the session, the Interior Minister met his Saudi counterpart, where he hailed the strong ties between the two brotherly countries under the leaderships of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. He expressed appreciation of the honorable role of Saudi Arabia in supporting security cooperation between the two countries. The meeting discussed security coordination and topics of common interest. The Interior Minister was accompanied by a delegation of Bahrain ambassador to Tunisia, Ibrahim Mahmoud Ahmed Abdullah and Interior Ministry officials. The President of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, patronized the Sunni Endowments Rectorate's first annual conference at the Isa Cultural Center. The event is set to continue until Monday and is attended by a number of Islamic scholars, academics, and researchers. During the event, Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed said that religious tolerance is among the key pillars of the Islamic world and is a guarantor of dignity, security, and peace. He added that Islam teaches the importance of religious moderation, which entails a responsibility to apply this principle and protect it. Sheikh Abdurrahman said that Islamic discourse is subjected to a lot of negativity today and that the goal of the conference is to address this challenge by asserting religious moderation as a defining principle for contemporary Islam. He added that Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, has been keen on maintaining the principles of religious moderation which has long characterized Bahrain's history, making it into its role model on peaceful coexistence between followers of various faiths. For his part, the president of the Sunni Endowments Directorate, Dr. Rashid bin Mohammed Al Hajri, welcomed the audience and expressed thanks to Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed for patronizing the event and expressed appreciation for the efforts of His Majesty the King for promoting the principles of moderation and coexistence. The Minister of Education, Dr. Majid bin Ali Naimi, inspected a number of national examination panels for the third grade of secondary school, which began today with the participation of thousands of government and private school students. The minister affirmed the role of the examinations as part of the National Initiatives Project to develop education and training and the ministry's efforts to implement them in cooperation with the Education and Training Quality Authority. Minister Naimi affirmed that the ministry will continue implementing development mental projects to boost education during the era of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The minister added that the ministry benefits from the examination results in evaluating and developing its efforts to prepare curricula and teaching strategies and create training programs for teachers as part of its plans to develop education in various stages. He noted the measures the ministry had taken to achieve the best results from the examinations through implementing a series of specialized training programs for teachers training students to answer similar questions and holding meetings with their families to inform them about the importance of the examinations and the necessity for encouraging their children to give them the appropriate attention. The Minister of Oil, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, inaugurated the third edition of the Felek Unreasonable Thinking Summit today with the participation of a high-level group of experts and a number of students from local and international universities. The event is organized by Felek Consulting Company in cooperation with National Oil and Gas Authority, NOGA, and supported by a number of national and international companies. The Minister of Oil welcomed all the attendees and expressed appreciation for the efforts of the Felic Consulting Company. He pointed out that these digital changes should be invested in establishing several projects that affect the improvement of the standard of living and the national economy in Bahrain. The minister added that innovation is a driving force for global economic growth, adding that this topic is important in attracting and creating creative and innovative human caters capable of applying modern technology. He stressed that Noga is always striving to strengthen its current and future oil projects by training its employees and empowering them in leadership positions to develop the oil sector. The Minister of Oil thanked the CEO of Fedek Consultancy, Sahil al speakers and participants and all those who contributed to the success of the events.